Okay, so nice to meet you again, nice Mr. Shear. So our last uh, interview was such a pleasure. After we published the article, we received lots of feedback from our readers. Great. So they are all very interested in the concert party and Mr. Shear yourself. So we pick up some uh, questions our readers care the most. So we want to like do a second interview with sure. you. Thank you so much. Okay, so the first one is some experts predict a huge economic cri crisis will come very soon. So they are wondering, does the Conservative Party has any strategy to counter against this? And it's a potential problem. So how do you plan to increase the, um, how do I say, the competitiveness of business and the to create more jobs? Well, you're right. There are some troubling signs on the horizon. There are some indicators that say that we could be in for a difficult patch. We've already seen some of the numbers. Billions of dollars have left Canada in foreign investment going to other countries. Yeah. Other countries who have lowered their tax rates to attract those jobs to come to their mm -hmm. regions. Uh, so what we've been very critical of this Liberal government is that when they chase away jobs and investment, when they tell natural resource companies that they can't do business in Canada, when they raise payroll taxes, when they tax small businesses, yeah. that people make decisions to invest in other countries. Mm -hmm. So part of our plan to protect Canada against a potential uh, recession mm -hmm. would be to make Canada as competitive as possible by lowering the regulatory regime. Yeah. There are a lot of rules and regulations that make it harder to do business in Canada right. than other countries. We've got to fix those. We've got to keep our tax rates low mm -hmm. so that people want to put their money in Canada. Mm -hmm. and the other thing I should mention is the massive deficits that the Liberals have been running while economic growth has been positive yeah. really puts Canada in a vulnerable position because when that recession comes, if we're already in deficit, it's going to restrict our flexibility. We're not going to be able to be, uh, we're not going to be able to respond as much as we should be able to. Yeah. So getting back to balanced budgets will also make Canada stronger in the event of a recession. Okay. So speaking of the tax, uh, the majority of our readers are hardworking taxpayers and most of them are immigrants. So they are wondering, do you have any plan to do for uh, like tax reflect or tax cut for the middle class family? Because uh, they, some of them, they work very hard for parents and they also need to take care of the children. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's a hard, it's hard society for them. So uh, this morning you intro uh, a new program about the parental leave EI benefit was launched. So can you be more specific course, on that? Of course. Yeah? Well, you're, you're hitting on a very important topic, and that is tax relief for hardworking Canadians. Yes. Uh, our whole campaign platform will be designed around leaving more money in the pockets of Canadians mm -hmm. so that they can get ahead. What I announced today was that a Conservative government would make maternity and parental leave benefits tax-free. Okay. What happens right now is when a, a new mom or dad goes on leave, yeah they lose up to 45% of their salary. Mm -hmm. That's a huge sacrifice. At the end of that, the government comes along and taxes a huge chunk of it back. Yeah. So what we're saying is that you've already made the sacrifice, you're giving up 45%, you're, you, you've got all the challenges that come with having a new child, you're spending all this money on car seats and high chairs and cribs. But we're gonna make those benefits tax-free. That's gonna leave up to $4,000 per person right. uh, in the pockets. We're also gonna be in introducing some exciting tax cuts during the election campaign okay. that will be targeted to help make life more affordable, mm -hmm. as well as some broad-based tax relief that will benefit everyone. Yeah. Um, also, uh, you know, the Labour Party, they introduced a 15 billion program of the Universal Pharmacy Care mm -hmm. Plan. So, seeing it will make every Canadian be able to buy medicine, the prescription medicine. So, that will save about billions of dollars. Do you have some similar plan on this? Well, on it's important medicine? to remember that that plan won't save money. That plan is going to cost money. It's okay. going to make it very difficult for people to keep their own plans. We know right now that, uh, that most Canadians have some kind of coverage, and okay. people are generally satisfied with the types of coverage they have. When the government gets rid of all that and imposes a one-size-fits-all solution, it's it, it's going to be very very costly. The government's already the government is already running twenty billion dollar deficits, okay. and now they're talking about adding fifteen billion dollars on top of that. That means taxes are going to go up to pay for something that many people already have. Mm -hmm. What we're going to focus on is the targeted relief for people who are falling through the cracks, mm -hmm. uh, people who are vulnerable, who through no fault of their own find themselves without drug coverage. We're going to have something to say about that, as well as for people with rare diseases. Uh, that's a real challenge because you can have yeah. people who have drug coverage, but then. 
a child or a family member or themselves get diagnosed with a rare disease that's not covered under existing plans, mm -hmm. it's very, very expensive. Yeah. That's a proper role for government to address. Keep in mind that the same people who designed this PharmaCare program mm -hmm. were part of the Kathleen Wynne Delta McGuinty Ontario government, which had so many scandals and such wasteful spending that I don't trust them to design anything on the federal okay. level. So, fair enough. Canada is well known for its, its well established uh, social social welfare system. So um, this problem is controversial because it can be misused or abused. And what is your plan to encourage all eligible people, eligible people, to work hard to contribute to the economy instead of staying at home and collecting benefits from the government? Mm. So, how do you want to? Well, it, 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 you're pointing out a, a very uh, important issue for governments. So on the one hand, we have to be very um, compassionate and re uh, responsive to people who, as I said, through no fault of their own, find themselves in difficult situations. Yeah. We live in a, in a wealthy society. Nobody should starve or go without a roof over their head. Uh, but at the same time, we want to make sure that people are encouraged to take available work. Yeah. And uh, so when we talk about social programs, I think they have to be targeted. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to be timely. They have to be, uh, and they have to have an incentive in there for people to take work as it becomes available. So that is the balanced approach that we'll be taking as we uh, as we aim to form government this October. Sorry, I want to add one more thing. Like uh, a recent a recent statist showed that more and more newcomers become ending up homeless mm. or become in living shelters. So do you think that's a problem? So. If people are being homeless or being living in a shelter, they have nothing to do mm. but collecting benefits. Try their yeah. So that that's what goes along with the incentives for work is the training that's involved, uh -huh. especially when you're talking about people who have come to Canada that may not yet have the uh, skills in English or French to right. be able to, to take work. So what we see right now, as we saw with the government handling the illegal border crossings, right. is they they, they are br brought to cities like Toronto and Montreal, but then there's no services to teach them English to, to ensure they have the types of training skills. We want people to come to Canada. We want people to come to Canada to, to grow our country mm -hmm. and to add to our economy and our society, but we have to make sure that the government has programs in place to help assist in the transition into working and living in Canada. What the government did, what Justin Trudeau did, was he had all the photo ops at the airports welcoming people to Canada. Right. Then he went away. Okay. <laughs> well, those people still have needs that aren't being addressed. So matching people to available work as well as investing in skills training and language training mm -hmm. has to be part of the solution. Otherwise, the problem will just continue to get worse. But, we, but you need to like make more financial support to them to for them to get the skills you want. That's right, there, there has to be the appropriate investments in making sure those programs work. Sure. So it's a combination of ensuring that people can't just jump the line and skip the queue, which is what's happened. We've had over 30, almost 40,000 people cross into Canada yeah. illegally. So the resources that are available for everybody else gets put under strain. Mm -hmm. So part of it is stopping people from coming in illegally, yeah. and the other part is making sure that there's adequate resources for those job training and language training programs. Well, those training, do you think that will be end up like a burden for the government? Well, uh, you know, because we already take many, you know, refugees or other. Well, as I said, if if we can restore the integrity to our border, uh, so that we we don't have uh, illegal crossings with people uh, jumping the line and skipping the queue. I believe that that will help strengthen the existing programs because they will be targeted for people who are coming to Canada the right way, people who are following the rules, coming to Canada through the normal procedure. So I'm, I'm very confident that by restoring the integrity to our border, stopping the Ill illegal border crossings. Okay. Remember, Justin Trudeau has done nothing. It's not that he's tried something that hasn't worked. Yeah. He's literally done nothing. He's changed no law. He's changed no regulation. All he's done is, uh, you know, is, is visit the, the area. He hasn't done anything concrete. So we need a solution that actually uh, restores the integrity of our border. That's what conservatives will do. Okay, so next question. <laughs> the Chinese community is highly concerned and closely watching the situation in Hong Kong. I believe you heard about that. Mm -hmm. So they are expecting the protest, which has been escalating over the past two months, to be end very soon. So on August 18, you tweeted, quote, <laughs> so everyone should commit to democracy, freedom, human rights. Now and in the coming days, we are all Hong Kongers. From your Twitter. Also, the Chinese embassy in Ottawa asks Canada to stop meddling 
the Hong Kong issues. So what do you want to say? Do you still hold out these views? Well, I certainly continue to, uh, to support those fundamental principles and values that have made Canada great. Uh, Canada supports the one country, two system uh, arrangement. Uh, we, we believe uh, that that is important to, to be upheld on, on both sides. And I, I believe we can all be very moved by what's going on when there are peaceful protests and, and people of, in Hong Kong have that, have that right under the one country, two system arrangement uh, for those types of, uh, of, of expressions. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very supportive of that. Well, of course, we, we are all very hopeful for a, a peaceful resolution. Okay, peaceful resolution, great. So the community safety is also a big concern. So Canada's attitude towards the terrorists, especially the ISIS terrorists, can be controversial. So for example, Omar Khadr. Recently, a UK uh, suspect, uh, ISIS suspect, named uh, Jack Ladders. I'm not, I'm not sure yeah, you heard Yeah, Jihadi Jack, yes. Ah, Jihadi. <laughs> <laughs> so he holds a dual uh, British and the Canadian nationality. So the UK decide to you know, send him away. People are worried maybe Canada will welcome back. Do you have any idea? I believe I believe Jihadi Jack is where he belongs in prison. Uh, okay. I would not I would not lift a finger to help him come to Canada. Uh, he this is something that the UK government has decided to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of means that uh, Canada couldn't uh, Canada's options are restricted in terms of what it can do about his nationality. Right. Uh, but at the he's in prison right now. That's where he belongs. We're talking about someone who chose to go to fight for ISIS, uh, a group that commit unconscionable crimes, horrific crimes against ethnic minor minorities, against uh, people of different religions, wiping out entire villages, uh, and and he needs to be held accountable for those crimes. So, um, as I said, I wouldn't lift a finger to help him come back to Canada. He's in prison now. That's where he should stay. Great. So, other than the terrorists, also like gun violence and other crime, so people are all very care about it. So, do you have any like? Plan to specific plan to what I see build a safer Canada. Mm -hmm. such like yeah, that. well, that's actually the name of our platform, <laughs> building a safer Canada. <laughs> uh, and but it's it's an important issue. Uh, we see again today that there were shootings recently uh, in Toronto, in the Toronto area. Mm -hmm. People are very concerned because they, yes, there are some of it is gang members targeting other gang members. Right. But we've seen in the past innocent by bystanders being killed or or wounded because they're caught in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Canadians have a right to live in a peaceful and secure. Re a neighborhood. True. The problem with the Liberals is that they've actually lowered the penalties for many of these violent crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, our plan for Safer Canada targets the gang members with tougher penalties. It'll make it harder for them to get bail, to get released, because okay. we know now that they get released and they go and they, they commit more crimes. Mm -hmm. Tackling illegal firearms that are coming into Canada, being smuggled in Canada, we're going to give our border security agents more tools to crack down on illegal handguns and illegal firearms and we're going to name and officially designate criminal organizations as gangs so that the police don't have to prove time and time again mm -hmm. that a gang is a gang we're gonna say once you've proven it once that can be applicable for every other prosecution so those are concrete steps that will really take criminals off the street for longer periods of time and make our society safer okay right so a lot of uh, Chinese restaurants have a shared experience being robbed mm. So and last month we have a local Chinese restaurant. There is a gunshot in the middle, uh, in the front of the door. They are all scared. So of course. people are seeing the crime rates are, I mean, increasingly like four years straight. So do you have confidence to solve this problem? Because people are saying Canada is becoming more. Mm -hmm. It's not as safety as before. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I do have confidence in our own plans. I know that Justin Trudeau will continue to do nothing. The problem with the Liberals is they fundamentally don't believe in holding people responsible for their crimes. Yeah. Uh, we do. We say to criminals, uh, conservatives, conservatives say to criminals, if you commit the same crime over and over again, you have chosen to be a criminal. And uh -huh. we, as the government, have the right to hold you accountable. We're not talking about a 16 or 17 year old kid who's made a mistake, made a, a poor judgment call. Uh, we're talking about, in many cases, people who have dozens and dozens of offenses. And what we're saying is that those people need to be off the streets. They need to be in prison 
uh, away from law abiding is since those restaurant owners, the people eating in those restaurants, the people walking by have the right to do that without being afraid. Mm -hmm. And so those that would prey on our communities, whether it's because they're selling drugs, yeah. because they're robbing stores, uh, when, when, they're get, when they're caught by the police, the police have to be able to count on the fact that they're actually going to go to jail for a meaningful period of time. That's right. what our plan will do. Okay. Do you have any idea on the gun ban strategy? Like well, ban it I, I listen completely? to the experts. The experts yeah. say that uh, a ban will not work, that asking law-abiding citizens, people who own firearms legally, mm -hmm. asking them to follow more laws won't make our community safer. In fact, it'll make our communities more vulnerable because the police will be using resources to go after the law-abiding firearms owners. We want those police officers to be solving the cases, catching the criminals, putting them in jail, not asking people who are already following all the laws right. to follow one more law. Okay, good. So, my last question. So, in the beginning of this month, which is uh, August 4th, I, I remember, mm -hmm. so the annual Pride Parade kicked off in Vancouver. So, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the leader of the NDP and Grey Party, they all joined the parade. Uh, with like millions of uh, uh, people, you didn't show up. And uh, last Sunday, Trudeau and uh, the leaders of NDP and the Green Party again, they joined uh, the people in Montreal with the Pride, uh, the Pride Parade. So you didn't show up either. <laughs> people are saying that this kind of action means the Conservative Party doesn't support or doesn't favor, is not in favor of LGBT community or culture. Do you have something to say? Yeah, I just I reject that premise, uh, absolutely. There are so many different ways that you can support a community. There are different ways that you can fight for equality rights of all Canadians. Uh, some of our members march, some of our MPs participate in those uh, parades. Uh, I have focused on ensuring that uh, people who are persecuted in other countries just because of who they are mm -hmm. uh, should be protected and should have a way to come to Canada so that they can be safe. So I'm going to continue to stand up for the equality rights of all Canadians, freedom of expression. I'm glad we live in a country where people can have a parade and can march and can choose yeah. whether or not they want to march. Mm -hmm. I will always fight to defend those rights and those freedoms. Sure. Do you have any plan to take part in any of the parades? I'm going to continue to support the community in, in the ways that I've mentioned uh -huh. and I'm going to continue to speak out uh, in favor of equality rights and for the freedom of expression for all Canes regardless of their orientation, regardless of their faith, regardless of their ethnicity. Okay, great. I think I'm okay. okay. Do you? Thank you very much. Thank you very appreciate much. appreciate it, yeah. Thank you so much for Thank you for your time. Lovely yeah, to yeah. see you again. Yeah. Yeah. So.